we scare feelings? Here we are, we're live. <laughs> so we have had some technical difficulties tonight. So we are coming to you from, um, we are still down in the worship center. However, um, hopefully the sound is gonna be good for you tonight. But if you are having some sound issues, um, we just ask that you bear with us um, and give us some grace and have patience with us this evening as we're um, things, um, are unexpectedly not going as planned, which is life, right? There you go. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about authentic authenticity tonight, so this is perfect. <laughs> what is happening right now is very in the moment and very real. <laughs> so we are so happy, though, that you guys are joining us tonight for um, April, if you can believe it. I can hardly believe that it's April 7th. I know I say that every month, but time just goes by so fast. It's just hard to believe that um, that here we are. So we are in April. Um, I think I see Kelly saying yeah, hi, Dan. Say hi, hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Um, if you do, hi, Kelly family. <laughs> if you do write comments or have questions, unfortunately, we don't have, um, oh, we just got access to a keyboard. Okay. <laughs> so we, we do can answer questions and write back to you now. Um, if you have any questions as we go throughout our intro tonight, um, we will be here to answer them for you. So thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And, um, we're glad that you're here with us. Um, in a few minutes, everybody's going to come down and we are going to have Sam is going to be speaking to us tonight on the topic of authenticity, um, a topic that I love um, and care about. And um, I just was thinking today of some word, other words for authenticity and two that came to mind immediately to me was number one was genuine and real. Um, and I feel like we live in a world where it's sometimes hard to find those things. What do you think? <laughs> Bruce is like, wow. Mm. Just throw that at me without any prep at all. Okay. Sorry. We'll let Bruce think about that. <laughs> what yeah, do you. I need a moment. I need a real moment to think about that. What do you guys in Facebook world, what do you think? Do you feel that. Um, finding authenticity or um, genuine um, people or communication or things that are real, do you, do you find that's hard to find um, in your day-to-day -day life? I know that I do. I, I think the internet, um, while we get to do great things like this and come to you and you get to be in your home, um, I think that the it offers a facade or a falsehood that's not real um, and people feel like they have to be something that they're not so other people will be envious of them um, maybe they're not trying to make people jealous but <laughs> feel like their life is it you can't it's really hear us. us yeah um, Sam do you think there's any way to be able to make the sound better Kelly's sent telling us they can't hear us Anything that we could do? You can use the mic and we'll boost the sound in the room. <laughs> um, the what? The mic? Okay. Let's, yeah, let's try this. Okay. A. Hello. How about this? Do you, can you guys, can you guys hear this when we use the mic? Is that helping at all? This is a regular month. 
Um, so no extra weeks and just the regular amount of days. And um, we just had the opportunity to celebrate Holy Week and Easter activities. And so that was a lot of fun and exciting. And so that um, was good. And then I know a lot of you are in spring break right now. So happy spring break to everyone that has this week off. I'm sorry that today was icky. <laughs> Yesterday was gorgeous. So we have that coming up this, or you're enjoying that this week. Bruce, did you prepare a dead joke for us today? I did not. I forgot it was first Wednesday of the month. What? Oh wait, I've got one. Okay. I've got one. Did you hear about the uh, chess player with the checkered pass? <laughs> she never likes them, but she always laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> I laugh because they are <laughs> ridiculous. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> Maybe it was better that you didn't. <laughs> so, versus dad joke for the month. Um, let us know how you feel about versus dad jokes. <laughs> Are we torturing with you every month when Bruce tells his dad jokes, or do we like them? <laughs> you can let us know later on. So, um, yeah. I... Easter Bunny's not real. <laughs> Is that a dad joke? No, but you just say it was real, it's not real. Oh, um, okay, well, we might have to be kids watching, so that would maybe wasn't the best thing to say right now. Uh, <laughs> I, okay, so we're going to be done with the live right now for tonight, and we're going to wait until everybody comes down here, because Bruce is just, we're going to ignore him. I hope you guys could not hear anything like that, and please send all of your comments to bigplanbrucestigler at gmail.com. I was saying, I was, I was saying, what are some other words for authenticity besides genuine and real? What are some other things, other words? And the other thing that I said are how, how is our world, how does our world just, okay. <laughs> so I didn't know that he was going to be totally unhelpful tonight. I <laughs> left him at home as I <laughs> was wont to do. <laughs> so uh, anybody out in in Facebook land that has um, any answers to those questions or waiting for everybody to come on down. Uh, we only have a couple more minutes left before we were going to do that. I don't know who's talking down there. <laughs> well, I think what we'll go ahead and do is just take some time to pray um, as we're waiting for the teaching time to start. So. Hopefully you can hear me a little better, but if not, just you can pray at home. So, God, thank you so much for this past week, um, for us to be able to celebrate Holy Week and to be able to celebrate your resurrection um, and what good news that is in our life. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come here and to learn more about who you are and who we are in you. Um, thank you for reminding love us more than we can even think or imagine. We just ask that this month, as we're digging into the theme of authenticity, God, that you would just open up our hearts and speak to our hearts for us to be more authentic, more real, and more genuine with those around us, Lord, and that in doing so, um, we are showing people more of who you are, God, and we just know that in doing that, we take risks. Um, we take risks for people not liking us or not loving us or us feeling um, not one of those things, God, and we just um, ask that we be adventurers and we be risk takers um, for the good of your kingdom, God, and we just thank you for this time again that we have to come together um, on Facebook and in person and to learn more about who you are. And we just ask that you be with Sam tonight as she speaks to us, um, that you would just be with her in this time. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, I 
Normally they're knocking on the door by now. <laughs> so, oh, okay, I just was looking at Kelly said, sorry, we didn't hear the question. We're trying to juggle dinner and, <laughs> and love children. I get it, it's okay, Kelly. <laughs> so I think we're just gonna take a pause on the video or we're just gonna move away from the video and I hear people coming this way. So we will be, Sam will be on in just a minute. as much as I can get. We can raise this up though. Right here. Hey. You can see the rubber. There's two other sides. Taking you for a ride. Come on in. Oh gosh. Yes, you can take that. Grab one on the way in. You can grab one of those sheets and a pen if you like. I'll wait for the all the people. Can you guys online see me? Hear me? We have some tech difficulties today, so we're running off the iPad. That's why it's up here with me for the lab people. So I'm going to feel really awkward. Half talking to them and half talking to you. Just make the teens hold it. Make the teens hold it. <laughs> Is this the extent of our crowd? Yeah, that's what I said all night. Sweet. Bless you to hear me fumble through this. Here, since we're on the iPad tonight, you can say hi, hi. to our friends at home. Hi. <laughs> yep, you now will forever live on the internet. You're welcome. All right, so I apologize to you online people because I probably won't look at you very often, but that's what you get tonight. It's really awkward angle. So, hello. In talking about authenticity tonight, this feels really authentic to feeling frazzled about being up here and having to run last minute tech issues, and, and that's okay. Um, before we get into it, I thought we would um, start with sort of an authentic confession for me. Um, I've been so sick and nervous for this, like more nervous than when I preached on Sunday morning to all the people last summer. Um, I think part of it is I didn't feel quite as prepared as I wanted to be for this. Um, I didn't write out a word for word teaching tonight. Um, so I don't have like a script to fall back on if I get lost, just some bullet points. Um, and the discussion aspect, the questions, the back and forth bit that we kind of do here on Wednesday night. Um, make me feel a little flustered. And so I wanted to tell CJ last week that I just didn't want to do it. But no matter how nervous I am, or the reasons why those things might be true, what's more true to me is that I love the Bible, 
and I love um, these value statements we came up with, and I love getting to share that, and so we get to do that together, and so we'll just jump right in. So first, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions so we can kind of get a read on where we're at together, and I see an online, oh, thanks, Kelly. She said I have a lovely profile. Um, <laughs> um, so feel free to chime in on actual questions, too. Um, when I say authenticity, what do you think it means? Authentic. Authentic. That's a great definition. Honest. Good. True to oneself. True to oneself. Make sure you want to sing the song. Consistent. Consistent. Yes. Imperfect. Imperfect. Loyal. Loyal. I have been real. Being real. Thanks, Kelly. Good. I'm not going to say what's right or wrong, we're just going to gauge our starting point. And, and when I talk about Peter in the Bible, what do you know about Peter? Too many people. Too many people. What do you say, Larry? Like? He's a knucklehead. He's a knucklehead. He was authentic. He was authentic. Mike, you both are real. What else? I heard a few more answers, but they were all at the same time. An apostle? Impulsive. Yes. yes, he was definitely that. Good. I like this. Okay, so now that we've got our brains kind of turning on what authenticity is and who Peter is, uh, we're going to kind of dig into Peter's life in the Bible and kind of see how Peter lived out his authenticity. So, authenticity is one of our core value statements here at Adventure, alongside discipleship, which we studied last month. And um, adventure, which we studied in February. Combining these values um, are what we kind of try to align ourselves with as we live out our mission here, which is that helping people make a life transforming connection with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, and equipping them to live the adventure of faith. You're welcome. We're living out my authenticity right in front of you. Um, specifically, uh, I'm going to read you what's on our. Uh, little mission vision values booklet, and it's also on your papers that you grab as you walk in the door if you're here on site. It says, Authenticity is living out our whole lives with transparent integrity. It's practicing humility by recognizing our own need for saving, our inability to do so ourselves, and our need for Jesus. In this recognition, we are compelled to treat others as ourselves, as people in process, seeking honesty gratitude, and deep joy in the incredible blessings and transformation God works in our lives. Authenticity is staying curious and amazed at who God is and practicing wonder by humbly seeking to know God and his desire for our lives ever increasingly. What I love about this definition is um, authenticity doesn't just have to do with us, right? It, it has a lot to do with God, too, and how we interact with him. So with this definition in mind, let's talk about Peter. So you guys kind of started in on who Peter was. He was a disciple. Um, his brother Andrew is actually the one who brought him to uh, Jesus because Andrew believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. It has a little subscript in the text. It's important to note here that Cephas and Peter both mean rock. It comes from an Aramaic word in uh, Greek, or yes, Cephas in Aramaic and Peter in Greek. Um, but they both mean rock. And we'll circle back to that in a little bit, but he becomes one of Jesus' disciples. Uh, he does disciple things, follows Jesus around, learns from him, is witness to what uh, Jesus is teaching and miracles and his earthly ministry, and in all of this is important to Peter's story, but I want to kind of hone in on a couple of specific stories. The first of which is when Peter walks on water. The context is that Jesus has just finished feeding the 5,000, um, and the disciples get ready to go, they get in a boat to go to the other side of the water, and um, Jesus is dismissing the crowds, 
and then he takes some time to pray by himself. And by the time he's ready to join the disciples, they have made it a ways away from shore. And so uh, Jesus starts walking on water. And it says specifically in Matthew 14, 25, and in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. <clears throat> but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out with fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come out on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So keeping in mind our framework for authenticity, what do you notice in the story that points out to it? I'm really good at waiting for answers. He asked Jesus for help. He asked Jesus for help, and I heard Mike say that he's impulsive. What? He's the only one that said anything. He's the only one that said anything? Yeah. But he also trusted Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he got out of the boat and walked away. Yeah, he did. He, he took some action on his faith. Yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking that it puts this um, boldness on what Peter believes about Jesus. It's this active faith. Kind of like we talk about on Sunday. Like faith has a kind of an active quality to it. Um, by faith, Peter got out of the boat and walked on water. By distraction, he um, started to fear and sink in the water. Um, when Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus, he falters. In a second change, he um, he recognizes recognizes his need for saving, which is right in that authenticity thing. He recognizes his need for saving and reaches out to Jesus. And it says, save me. And God saves him immediately. I love that that little descriptor's in there. There's endless ramifications for us through this story. This metaphor of what happens when we take our eyes off of Jesus, what happens when our faith falters and we doubt. And that's a great reminder and a great encouragement. But I think there's, there's more here, too. God can handle our doubts and our failures. He rescued Peter immediately upon his cry for help. He was right there, and his timing was perfect. If I just was thinking, like, if God had just barely started walking out on the water, and Peter's already sinking in, it would have maybe taken a minute longer for Jesus to get to him. Or, but he was right there. God already knew what was going to happen, and he was prepared for all of Peter's boldness and his doubts. I was also thinking, what if Peter had? stuff that eagerness back down in and, and wasn't impulsive and he decided and said that ah, I want to do this but maybe I'm too scared to ask like what if they think I'm crazy for even trying this this is already crazy that Jesus is walking on water Let's, I mean recognize that point we're already witnessing a miracle here and Peter wants to join in on the fun which is crazy I'm just going to step that back in and not even ask but by being authentic Peter gets to experience Jesus's miracle, he gets to experience saving grace, and be drawn closer to him in the process. Which is just cool. In um, the next story I kind of want to focus on is in Matthew 16. And it's actually two little stories back to back. Uh, Peter confesses uh, Jesus as the Christ, who's actually the first one to do so. And I'm going to read this little section. It's Matthew 16, 13 through 23. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock 
I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. So there's kind of one story, and it follows into the second one. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Part be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. So in comparison, comparing these two little stories, before I give you my take, what do you see, especially keeping that authenticity framework? Yeah, Peter being impulsive and and not thinking things through and then being almost rebuked back, right? Yeah. He was so desperately <clears throat> loving Jesus. He couldn't see that separation occurring. Mm-hmm. Mm he goes from being praised to being rebuked. Going from being praised to being rebuked. That's a big one. Any comments online? I see one from earlier. So, one of the things that I thought was in our definition, it says uh, recognizing we are people in process, something like that in there. Um, Peter is a person in process. One minute he gets it, one minute he doesn't get it, doesn't even really come close to getting it. Jesus, Jesus still knows it all, though. I love that Jesus actually tells Peter before this second story that he's going to build his church through him, before Peter rebukes him. Jesus knows that this is going to happen, that Peter is flawed, that he doesn't quite fully grasp it yet. But he still says, on this rock, Peter's name, it says we took it back, on this rock, I'm going to build my church, I'm Peter, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Even though Peter is flawed, he's trying to live out his faith in Jesus, and that's what God's going to use. This guy who is in one story, who he is mind on man instead of God is the one through which Jesus builds a thriving church. He uses these broken moments. He's grown here. He's focusing Peter. He's teaching him. He's bringing him alongside and making him aware of where his eyes are. But that's only possible because of Peter's authentic actions. If Peter just, again, if he just thought these things in isolation without actually trying to live them out, what would he have learned? He wouldn't have had this interaction. He wouldn't have been turned back towards keeping his eyes on God. And the last little story I wanted to dig into was kind of one of my favorites. Um, and I totally nerded out. Um, maybe it's a seminary thing. I've been to seminary and studied Greek for two years. You get really nerdy about the Greek. Um, <clears throat> I even texted CJ on Friday and I was like, this is so cool. I've never noticed this before. Um, we'll get to that in a second. But the, this story is one you probably actually heard last week because it happens kind of in the, the Easter story. It's where Peter denies Jesus three times, but is also restored. Um, to paraphrase for time's sake, this is a story many of you know. Um, Jesus tells his disciples that because of where he's going, this is in Matthew 26, because of where he, uh, he's going, that um, they'll all be scattered. And Peter, in his earnest, Impulsive devotion says, though they will all fall away, I will not. I will never fall away. Jesus responds to that, yes, Peter, you will indeed deny me three times before the rooster crows. And Peter says again, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. But what ends up happening? Yep. Yep, he, exactly. Yes, he, he does indeed deny it. Peter denies Jesus three times. And when the rooster crows that third time, he's reminded of what Jesus said and he 
the text says, he went out and wept bitterly. And the story kind of leaves us hanging there for a bit, but I think we get a glimpse, even in this, into Peter's authenticity, his devotion. Um, no matter how flawed, uh, his turn towards sorrow and then grieving over his denial. And then where this story kind of picks back up again is in John 21, after Jesus' death and resurrection. And it says in verse 16, When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, you love me. And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by which kind of death was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. Before I go off on my nerdy little tangent, what do you notice know about this story? The threes. The threes? Yes. He denied Christ three times. Christ asked him three times. Mm -hmm. Denied three times and restored three times. Yeah, it really stuck with him. Yeah, Jack. Over, over 
arms again. But yes, I still love you. I love you a lot. And Jesus said, okay, we can work with this. We'll take it and we'll go from here. Our love is weak. We are human, and even in our strongest moments, our love pales in comparison to Jesus's. But in our authentic owning of where we're at, um, and earnestly seeking him, Jesus still continues to use us. And invites us to be his sheep. And God, um, God really does use Peter. Um, he does what he said anyway. He goes on to build a massive, thriving church through Peter. He uses uh, Peter in all of his ordinary humanity, humanity but, um, but through his love of God, he does great things. To remind myself of some of those things I was listening to Acts this morning as I was driving um, home from dropping my kids off from school. And one of the things that really stuck out to me was this little line in Acts 4, 413 to be exact, it's talking about Peter and John and they're in front of um, the high priest after being in prison and you can look more at that story, but what it says is that Peter and John are specifically called out as uneducated, common men. These are not these guys that we might have on a pedestal because of what God did through them. These were ordinary people. These were people who, like us, are flawed and human, and um, but God uses them because they were living authentically, because they were doing the things that we talk about in our authenticity statement. They were practicing humility. They were being honest. They were seeking to know Jesus better, and God still uses them. Being authentic kind of brings this um, freedom, I feel like, that we can keep talking about for forever. Being authentic acknowledges who we are and what we've done, um, but that we get to walk forward, focus not on our power or our feelings, but on what God can do. It allows the work of the Spirit to transform us, in being seen, we allow um, others to see God and to give him the glory. Uh, and I think, too, if we don't do this, if we don't walk authentically, if we let our failures um, define us, then we kind of diminish the saving power of Jesus. And if we hide all our misdeeds away, if we hide our fears and sins and shortcomings, um, then how, how are people going to see, how are we going to know this saving power of God? And so I want to open it up for questions, but um, my, I guess my kind of closing encouragement is that authenticity statement. As we continue to go from here and um, move on thinking about authenticity is, what are the things that hold us back? How can we use this practically? Because I could stand up here and write my practical course all day long. That's kind of the things I jump to is I read a second of text and I'm like, yes, let's do this. I want to do this too. Um, and this is actually something that we can kind of like do because it's owning a lot of who we are. It's recognizing where we're at, being aware of it, and then turning it over to God and letting him do the work. So, I feel like that was kind of a rambly end. But, let's talk about some things you might want to talk about. But, oh, well not but, but. <laughs> <laughs> what I'd love to hear from you most is what you think might be an important um, aspect of being authentic, especially in this life of a modern day believer. What does that look like? Not being a hypocrite. Not being a hypocrite. And I think that's hard, though, because when you look at, I mean, it is hard. I don't think that it's hard. It is hard. Um, but I, when looking at the story of Peter, when he's denying, you know, Jesus tells him he's going to deny him. No, Lord, I would never do that. I think in his heart, he really didn't think that he was going to deny Jesus three times. And in the hype of that moment, um, when they're going into Jerusalem and everything is going so great and people are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, it's like we're untouchable, you know? And it's that mountaintop experience that people have, like when they go to camp or whatever it is that they do, um, that they don't ever think 
tomorrow I'm, you know, going to deny you. And then it goes from the mountain to the valley. And the valley was very, very dark in that time. And he got, I think like a lot of us, he got scared and he got overwhelmed. And the shame he must have felt, and you know, it talks about it in the scriptures. But I just think for us, I don't ever think, oh, I'm not going to be real, I'm not going to be genuine, I'm not going to be honest, um, and that I'm, I will never turn, you know, I will never, like, disappoint God. Like, I don't go into things thinking like that, um, and I don't think P Peter did either, but we do. So then where, you know, then where are we at at the end of all that? You know, then, not really a question as much as just kind of what I was thinking about when you were talking, um, that we don't, we don't go into the denial of Christ, like, full-heartedly. Like, I don't think he did that on purpose. And But God saw that and had grace for him and redeemed him, which he does to us as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not quite sure how to sum that up. That's for okay. I, I just thought about people. that. Sorry. I'll Michelle said that. really cool things about <laughs> the difference between the mountaintop and the valley and how we don't really go into the denial aspect with our thinking that we're, you know, like, I'm intentionally denying Jesus, but rather that it kind of happens because we get overwhelmed. And the cool thing about that is God still meets us where we're at and brings us out of it. Is that a Thank you. decent <laughs> summary? Okay. Thanks for sharing. Um, Tammy online says, don't pretend to be perfect and have everything figured out. Thanks, Tammy, for responding. Don't pretend to be perfect and have everything figured out. That is a great application. Letting people in. Yeah, Karen. I think that's the humility. I think that's the huge aspect. I think, because I, I don't know why, I was thinking about what um, Judy had said, and I think part of that comes with humility, and it, then it kind of drew me to what Michelle was think, saying, too. Like, I think humility is such a big aspect in how we are with others, how we are with ourselves, um, our, our, the, where we put ourselves, we put ourselves in the first seat or the last seat. Mm -hmm. um, deserve that seat or or is it someone else you know i think it changes the holy spirit changes that outlook of how we live life how we treat others what's our priority what's not a lot of that is just not even in our control it's sitting there saying like hey i'm willing to forego whatever thought i have help me like i messed up you know it's like this karen talking about humility and how that's allowing the Holy Spirit to work. And I think that's the, the cool part, right? It's, it's almost like a surrender. Like, well, I can't really do this in my own power. It's recognizing that we need Jesus to do these things. And all the times we fail trying to do it on our own and then hopefully walking forward. Still trying, but with humility. I see another comment. Oh, it says we can hear Michelle, good. I think there's a balance of humility in there, recognizing that we, like Peter, may be at a mountain top, but just because our faith may be there at one point in time doesn't mean that it will always stay there. It's a relationship we are always working at. I love that last thing. Authenticity. We're always seeking God. Anybody else? Yeah. We all fall short, which is so true. But it's like, it's the owning of that, right? Like, if I constantly say, like, I'm going to be, I don't know. Too big a thumbs up for saying, I don't know. I told him I was really nervous about answering questions, and my knee jerk response is to say, I don't know. And it's really like a pause when I'm thinking, but also, sometimes I just don't know. Being authentic. <laughs> yeah, Laurel. And I 
like what you said and to piggyback from that dot 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 I I think that's a time when the Holy Spirit is saying okay bring it to me come again surrender today and and to always take all of that to him each day in prayer and abide in him ever ever so closely mm. um because we we cannot do things on our own um, irregardless of what some modern teachings are saying today um we've got to take it to them uh, in the old days we used to say put your cares at the foot of the cross and leave them there don't pick it back up yeah i i love that could you guys hear a little because she is a wise woman who's both wise here. But always taking it back to God, always taking it back to the one who can save us, always trying to abide in Him instead of our own power. CJ. Aren't we supposed to be asking you questions and making you squirm up there? Yeah, I was just about to say, okay, any last questions? Because you're one go and asking me questions. I have a question. <laughs> it's a big question. No, no, it's just that um, being authentic is hard. It's a value statement. It's one of those things that we can all talk about and say, oh, yeah, that's something we should do. And yeah, yeah, that's a value. What frees us, what freed Peter, what frees us, what frees followers of Jesus to be able to take that step and to be vulnerable, to be honest, to be authentic, to walk authentically with Jesus and with one another? It's not just a vertical line, it's a horizontal line. Right? And so how do we do that? What how frees do us, we... What, what frees us to be able to walk authentically with Jesus and with one another? What frees us to walk authentically with Jesus and one another? Humility. Ooh, thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Drop the pride. Dropping the pride. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Walking in the truth of who God is. Yeah, Caitlin. I think you have to do it intentionally. Intentionally. Being transparent. Being transparent. Ooh, that bonus points for words in the definition. <laughs> we also know that God wants a relationship with Him, and He also wants us to have relationships with one another. So He's calling us to it, and He will equip us to do it. So sometimes leading into that looks scary. I personally, biblical community, frightening to think about, but um, leaning into that, knowing like God's called us to do this, so let's do this, and saying to the people I was doing biblical community with, like, I'm terrified, but I'm going to do this because God says we are called to do it, so let's do this. Yeah, leaning into the biblical community and calling God his son. I was just thinking about that, like, God already knows. He knows us, right? Like, whether we admit it or not, he already knows us. He already, he already invited us to the cross. He already invited us through this process of transformation and into it. And he's already, he's already there. All we need to do is turn towards him. I think this, like, aspect of, of authenticity is... Oh, I don't want to go back to my definition. Can we first thing? Second thing? Um, I'm going to throw papers. Um, I didn't even pull out the right one. Okay. I just think these things that are on the body statement, like the transparent integrity, I think it said, practicing wonder and curiosity um, and humility. And I love actually that we use the word practicing because kind of like what's brought up is we're, we're going to fail, but we're practicing living out what we believe. Faithfully, and we can do it in the small things too, like just turning to God in prayer. It's not a just. It's not just turning to God in prayer. I take these things to God, even if I'm not comfortable sharing them with my community yet. I can still talk to God about them because He already knows, and He already has called us beloved, and He's already 
chosen us to love, and so as we turn towards him, then maybe we start listening and he prompts us to go out elsewhere. Cool. I think the crazy thing about sharing things that you're afraid to share with somebody, and then it's not going as bad as you expected, but the more you share, the more you want to share. Like, the more you have someone to talk to and the more you can be truthful, the better it feels and the more you end up sharing over time and then suddenly you're like, I have nothing to hide. You know everything and I can come to you with anything. And I think that starts easier for God because as you said, he already knows, but as you can start extending that to other people, it, the, the less you feel like you have to hide, the, the more weight gets lifted off of you as a person, the more real you can be, the, the lighter your life is. I also don't know how to sum that up for you, but that, yes. <laughs> yes and amen. I think, too, I don't want to diminish the fact that, we have to go in a second, but I don't want to diminish the fact that there are risks, potentially, to living authentically. There can be. And, I mean, kind of what Jesse said in terms of, like, it sometimes doesn't go as bad as you think. It might go to live authentically, especially alongside other people. But it might sometimes also. And the, But the cool thing we get to live out is that by doing that, God will still use it. He doesn't waste anything. He's going to be alongside us. He's still inviting us to the table. And it's in... I, I just... I think we limit ourselves so much when we choose not to. We're limiting the power of the Holy Spirit to work huge transformation, as he did in Peter. So, if you want to learn more about this, you should go to the end of the other end of the building and join them for opening up their base camp boxes and dig into it, because there's really cool things in that box this month, and I won't tell you all about it, because they're going to tell you all about it, but you should participate, because it's cool, and this is something that we believe to the core. So, thank you for being on this authentic ride with me. <laughs> Exit stage left. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy and Genevieve. We. And now back to your co-hosts <laughs> for this evening, the lovely Bruce and Michelle. What do we have in the boxes, Michelle? Just looking in there. I am looking to see. This is the first time I've opened it. So, oh, the one thing that I did um, want to share with you guys is that um, on at the in the box it says stop, and all of you have seen the stop. So I don't know if you're blowing through the stop sign or not now. <laughs> You've gotten too used to seeing the word stop. But the activity for the do activity this month, um, they have suggested to go ahead and read ahead because whatever the activity is, you may want to do it somewhere else than where you normally have your group. So go ahead and read um, the sign on here that says stop. And then you can make your, make your decisions. So it looks like we have a authentic answer game and I'm wondering, oh, here, oh yes, okay. So it comes with this blow up beach ball and it has numbers on it. And I imagine, yes, 
look, the numbers correspond to questions. <laughs> I'm so smart. So what you're going to do is you will be blowing up the ball and then you'll have an um, opportunity to throw, I think if I get too close it says that. <laughs> Sorry. No, that was me, not you, honey. Um, so you'll, then you'll be throwing it to one another and then ask each other questions. You're holding the mic, so under the mic. Hand up. That's me? You're on the receiver. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so that looks like a fun activity. Nope, nothing, nothing like live, huh? Right? Yeah. <laughs> live and unfiltered. That's great. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, so then we have our guided scripture activity, which I don't know about you guys, but um, our group has really been enjoying doing these every month. Um, they've been a lot of fun, and we've learned a lot of things um, about the scriptures. There's a celebration activity in here. And, oh, spring is upon us. Um, looks like maybe a scavenger hunt in that as well. So also your handy dandy field guide that gives you um, ideas and questions and um, ways for you to participate in the theme of on authenticity this month. So if you are not here in the building, which if you are joining us on live, you are not here in the building, um, you can come by anytime starting tomorrow and pick up your box for next month. So I think that's it. Awesome. Yep. So we are done for the night. We hope you guys have a wonderful, lovely evening, and we will see you back here next month. Have a good night. Remember to be authentic. <laughs>